talk very quickly about finding the domain or the range of a relation or a function. A relation is just a relationship between two variables, like x and y, or between distance and time. Many relations are functions. We'll talk at another time about when a relation is or isn't a function. But we can find the domain of these equations uh, by looking at all the x values that are part of that equation or part of that function, or part of that relation. And we're gonna to look today at different graphs and try to identify the domain. We're gonna do the same thing with range. Range are all the y values in a relationship between two variables or a function. All the y values that get to participate in these. We're just gonna do a couple of examples, take notes, and we'll go from there. All right, let's look at this first lovely function here. And whenever a function goes to the end of the page, you can imagine that there are little arrows there, that it goes on and on in kind of the same capacity. So let's first look at the domain. Remember the domain are all the x values that get to participate in this graph. So if you imagine all these different x values, your question is, okay, does each x get to participate? For example, this x negative 2. Oh, yeah. Boom. There's a point on this graph when x is negative 2. So too when x is 0. So too when x is 1. So too when x is 2.5. And I think that if I continued down towards negative infinity, every x would have a y. We're assuming that this thing is just going up and down and up and down forever. Okay? You might recognize this curve, those of you who remember trigonometry. So if that's the case, if we're thinking that this curve continues in the same pattern, I'm thinking every single x gets to participate. So my domain is all x's. So we can say that in a couple of different ways. We could say all real numbers. Every number that we've met so far, one half, negative a thousand, eight million, seven tenths, every real number, every number that we've met so far has, uh, gets to participate in this graph, okay? Let's look at the range. Well, I don't think every y value gets to participate. Remember, range are your y values. So if I swoop from down to up, I think you'll notice that down here, none of these y values get to play. None of these y values get to participate. And none of these y values. Let's look, what do we think the smallest y value is? Oh, it looks like negative one is the smallest value, and positive 1 is the biggest y value. Now we're going to talk about different ways we can notate this, but one way to notate this is to say, okay, well, I go from negative 1 to positive 1, and my y value is in between those. You've probably seen this notation before in algebra. This means negative 1 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1. It means only these y values from negative 1 up to positive 1 get to play in this function. All right? Let's look at this example over here. This is an example of a relation just made up of four points. And notice I'm not calling this a function because it's not a function. Think about why. We'll talk about that later. Here's a point. Here's a point. Here's a point, here's a point, here's a point. That's, this whole relationship is made up of those five points. So what x values are participating in this relation? Well, just this x value, which is negative 1, just this x value, which is 1, just this x value, which is 2, and just this x value, which is 3. Right? Here's 1, here's negative 1, boink. Boink, boink, and three. 
It's just those separate distinct x values. And I'm going to use some fancy, sometimes this is called set notation. Sometimes we put those fun brackets around this too. This is all called set notation. I'm not so worried about that as long as you understand it's just these distinct x values that get to play. Now what y values get to play here? What would my range be? Well, my range would be all the y values. So it looks like this has a y value of negative 1. So negative 1 is in my range. This point right here looks like it has a y value of 0. So 0 is in my range. This point right here has a y value of 1. So 1 is in my range. This point has a y value of 2, so 2 is on my range. And finally, this point right up here has a y value of 3. So let's put the cool curly cues, the set notation. So my range is made up of negative 1, so that's the y value of this point. 0, that's the y value of this point. 1, that's the y value of that point. 2, and 3. Domain and range. Let's do two more examples. All right, this looks like a parabola that's on its side. This is not a function either. Hmm, I wonder why. We'll talk about that in class. But we'll call this a relation, and we'll look at the domain of this. So remember, the domain is all the x values. So sometimes I swoop from left to right to see when my x values begin to participate. I think if I'm swooping from left to right, do you see anything? Do you see the graph anywhere? No, so I don't think any of these x values get to play. But from zero on, from zero on, all of those x values are part of this relation. So I'm going to say that x goes from zero on. And I can write that like this. Before we look at the range, let's remind ourselves what I said before. We can assume that they're little arrows like this. And it might not be obvious yet, but basically when you have something like this, the assumption is that this parabola on its side is just growing, 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 growing. So it's going to go up, 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 up forever and down, 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 down forever. So if that's the case, if I'm saying that it's going up, 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 and down, 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 what do you think the range is going to be? Yeah, the range is going to be all real numbers. Every single number gets to participate in the range. All real numbers. And if we want, we can put the little curly Q set things. We don't have to do that, though. So that's the range. All the y values, if I go up, 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 each y value is going to have a point on that. One more example. Here's another set of things. Now this is a function, believe it or not. And I'll just highlight, it's just made up of, let's see, one, two, three, four separate points. And maybe just for fun, let's just write the coordinates of each point. This coordinate is negative 1, 2. This coordinate is 0, 1. This point right here is 1, 1. This point right here is 2, 2. That might be helpful for us looking at the domain. The domain is all the x's. So I'm just going to list all the x's. I see a negative 1 as an x. I see a 0 as an x, I see a 1 as an x, and I see a 2 as an x. There's your domain, just those separate numbers. Nothing in between, right? It's not like all of these where it's all the numbers. It's just these separate, discrete numbers. And the range here, well, the range is my y values, so it's just a list of all the y values. 2, 1. One again, I don't have to list one again. And two again, I don't have to list two again. It's a little funny to say two and then one. I could, but I'm just going to write them in order. One is in the range and two is in the range. 
it's, you don't have to write one, one, two, two. It's kind of like if somebody goes to a party and then they leave and they come back, you don't say, oh, Frank went to the party and then Frank went to the party. No, you just say Frank was at the party, right? So one is in the range and two is in the range. All right, I hope that was helpful and we'll talk more about this.